defining moment, noun. A point at which the essential nature or character of a person, group, is revealed, revealed or identified. Today I'd like to share several of my own defining moments with you and the characteristic that I think they find. My childhood home was across the street from a lemon orchard. There was a long row of eucalyptus trees down in front of that orchard, and then a field, about 12 feet wide, down that whole length of that orchard. And we used to play in that field, my friends and I, probably about seven of us all together, if you count the little kids, too. We tried not to, mostly. Well, one day, we got the bright idea that we would go over into the field, and we would build a fire. And we would toast marshmallows, and it would be extreme awesome. Yeah, so we did. Everything went fine. We built a small fire. We toasted marshmallows. We ate. We thought we were the smartest things to ever hit this planet, right? Because everything's going so well. We carefully put out the fire. And we put the toasting sticks into my family's garbage bin. Because our home was right next to the field, so it was very convenient. Of course, covering our tracks entirely. Mm -hmm. Of course, my dad picked up on that right away, figured out what we had been up to, unbeknownst to my sister and myself, and he called us on it, asked us what we had been up to that day. Well, we lied. Nothing. Mm -hmm. And he called us on that. I have never felt so awful in my whole life is when my dad told my sister and I that trust was precious and fragile, easily lost, difficult to recover. And we had lost our parents' trust and had to regain, regain it. We were grounded for, I think it was six weeks, but that wasn't near so severe as the knowledge that we had betrayed a trust. Moving on, it's eighth grade in junior high school. The best time of your life, right? So easy, life is smooth sailing, not hormones raging, none of that stuff going on. I took home a failing grade on my mid-report, midterm report, in science. I love science. I live for science. I would be a scientist if I could have figured out, back when I was going through college, how to make a living as one. I went to kill. Well, Dad saw that report, he sat me down. He didn't lecture. He didn't tell me he was just very disappointed in me and that I needed to work harder. He asked me, what happened? What happened, what was going on? And I told him, it was an awful class. The instructor was neither inspired nor a guide. Essentially, it was a free-for-all every fifth period of my day in eighth grade science. To get an A, all one had to do was four one-page book reports. No presentation, you turn in a sheet of paper. Eight and a half by 11, not college ruled, the wide stuff. Minimal work. And I couldn't do it. It didn't engage me, it didn't challenge me, it pissed me off. Dad said. Jan, you're going to have lots of teachers in your life. Some will be phenomenal. Most will be adequate. Some will be awful. It's your job to get the knowledge that they have, whether it takes guile, cunning, whatever you have to do, your job is to get what they've got, that treasure, and incorporate it. I went back and I aced that class and many more assignments after that. We've all heard Corinthians, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs, love does not delight in evil but rejoices in truth. It always protects, always trusts, 
always hopes, always perseveres. My parents have been stuck with me for 50 years now. If you talk to my mom, that means they've been married 51 years. If you talk to dad, it means he'll tell you 49. <laughs> that's, that's dad. We survived all the eye-rolling, sarcastic adolescent years, the made-it-through-college years, the mom-dad-can-I-borrow-money-to-fix-the-car years, the failed marriage years, the single mom years. And after all of those defining moments, they still enthusiastically and generously supported a second wedding for their eldest daughter. That's unconditional love. I am a daddy's girl, and I would be remiss if I left you thinking that there were no strong women in my life and failed to speak of them. My grandmother Cook, who was abandoned by her husband in the late 40s and had to go work in a sawmill in a little bitty town. It's called the town slut for a lot of years. Grandma Derwin, who was widowed early, had to go to work and, oh my God, had to learn to drive in her early 50s. <laughs> my mom, who was the only female in her graduating class at UCLA's engineering school. All of these women provided so many defining moments in my life. My name is Jenna Carlson. Thank you for sharing some of my defining moments.